Hi. Now, in the last part, we're told that immediately before the ball hits the ground, the direction of motion of the ball makes an angle of alpha with the horizontal. And what we've got to do is find that angle alpha. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back. Let's see how you would have got on. Well, first of all, let's just put the angle alpha in. What's going to happen is that as the ball just hits the ground, its direction of motion is going to be at a tangent to the curve, say something like that. Now, the angle that we're being asked to find, the angle between the direction of motion and the horizontal, has to be this angle here. This is our angle alpha. Now, to work out what alpha is, I'm going to need to work out what the two components of the velocity are so that I can form a vector triangle. We've got the downward velocity down there and we've got the horizontal one across there. So that essentially we're going to be looking at a triangle something like this where we've got this one okay, and we've got this component down there and we've got the velocity of the ball in red, something like that. So angle alpha is going to be this angle in here. And to get alpha, if I know these two velocities, I can then use trigonometry to work out what alpha is. So that's where we're going. Now, I know what this horizontal one is because the horizontal speed always remains exactly the same because there's no acceleration in the horizontal sense. And we worked out that it was 4 meters per second earlier on in the problem. So we'll just put that in as 4 meters per second. So really it's the vertical one that we need to get. So if I just call this, say, the vertical component at time t, that's what we're trying to find. Now to get this, what I need to do is consider the vertical motion. So we'll just put that in there, consider the vertical motion. And we need a positive sense, and our positive sense is going to be in the upward sense, okay? Because that was the initial direction that we projected in. So we build up a SUVAP-based equation, we know what S is, the displacement from here down to here. It went up, came back down, so it's gone back down 6 units. So S is minus 6. U is going to be 8.8. .8. We found that out in an earlier part. So 8.8 .8 there. V, the final velocity, well, that's what we're trying to find. Called it VT here, so just put that in there. And... A, the acceleration, well that's going to be minus 9.8, the acceleration due to gravity. And T, the time, well that's equal to big T. And I've updated it with that value we found in part C, 2.323 and so on. Now, there's several formulas that you could choose actually to work out what VT is, knowing these other variables. You could have, for instance, V squared equals u squared plus 2as. You could try that one if you like. What else could you use? You could use s equals vt minus a half at squared. Or you could use this one, that is v equals u plus at. It's this one that I'm going to use, but do experiment with the other ones. No reason why not. you don't want to use the other ones. I'm going to use this one purely because I feel it's easier to work with. So if I do work with that one there, okay, we've therefore got that V equals U, U being 8.8 .8 plus AT. Well, A is minus 9.8, so I'll put that in as minus 9.8. And we've got T, T then is 2.323 and so on. And if you work this out, 
what you get is a negative value 13.9654 and so on. We'd expect a negative value because it's coming downwards in the opposite sense to our positive value. Okay, so we can update this. This is going to be in magnitude 13.9654 and so on. So to get alpha, all I need to do is by using trigonometry, tan of alpha will be this value over the 4. So if I inverse tan both sides, I'm going to have alpha equals the inverse tan of 13.9654 and so on divided by the 4. And if you work this out, you find that you get 74 degrees to two significant figures, 2SF. Okay?